Welcome back. We're going to dive deeper into a pre-flight inspection and the responsibilities of that pre-flight inspection for the remote pilot in command. We have an extensive checklist that's provided for us that we'll go through. A SUAS and associated components must be maintained in a condition for safe operation. It is the responsibility of a remote pilot in command to perform a pre-flight inspection to verify that the SUAS and associated components are in a condition for safe operations. A pre-flight inspection should be conducted in accordance with the SUAS manufacturer's inspection procedures. If they don't have one, it's highly recommended that you develop one. A good checklist to follow if you don't have one is the Advisory Circular 107-2. In that, you'll find a checklist of 24 items. Make sure that your checklist is appropriate for the type of UA that you have, the type of program and operation that you conduct. Make sure it's scalable. It fits to your needs. Naturally, a pre-flight inspection is more than just checking out the UA. You also need to check out the control station, the data links, any payload, and of course supporting equipment. But don't forget to check the weather before you fly. A pre-flight inspection should include a visual or functional check of the following items. There's no need to memorize all of this. All right. First thing you're going to do is a visual condition inspection. You're going to look at the UA, you're going to look at the control station, and any other supporting equipment. Take a look at the airframe structure underneath, all around. Make sure that the registration markings are visible. If there are any movable control surfaces, make sure that they're working. Check out those servo motors. Here's a common one I like to look at, and that's the propulsion system, in this case, the propellers. Make sure that there are no cracks in your propellers, the propellers are on the right servo motors, that type of thing. Make sure that your UA, control station, or any other device that requires energy to operate properly has adequate energy supply. Don't forget the avionics, such as transceivers and navigation equipment. Also, before every flight, you need to make sure your UA is calibrated. Double check your control station transceiver the communication navigation data links and antennas for the control station. Additionally, if you have a display panel for your control station, make sure that's working. If you have ground support equipment, double check that. Before you hit that green button, make sure that the control link is working properly between the control station and the UA. Make sure that all control surfaces are operating as expected. Again, double check navigation and communication data links. Also check flight termination systems if it's installed, and this may include loss of control programming. If your UA uses fuel, besides a battery of course, make sure it's the correct type and that you have enough for the operation. Double check the battery levels for the UA and the control station. Make sure they have enough for the intended operation. If there's any attached equipment, make sure that it's securely attached. If your UA uses GPS services, make sure that it's connected to at least four satellites and document that. Take a look at your UA propellers. Inspect them for any imbalances or irregular operation. Check for cracks. Also check to make sure that your heading and altitude operations are properly working. Also take a look at your environment to see if there's any type of obstruction that may interfere with your UAS. All right, the last one. For your operation, double check the environment of where your operation is going to be conducted. If you suspect there's going to be any type of radio interference, then recheck all controls and the stability of the UA.